Hello random people, welcome to Random Garage, the channel where we're always doing something. Today on Random Garage we're going to be installing this juice box electric vehicle charger. The wife just ordered a Tesla this weekend and in planning uh, we had ordered this uh, juice box and uh, it connects to the network through Wi-Fi um, with this brand or I think it was ChargePoint was the other brand. We get a discount for the electric car charging through the uh, electric company. For starters, I'm going to be taking off the uh, 1450 NEMA plug cord because uh, there's a plug in the garage that's um, 240 volt, but it's a different style plug. So I'm just going to take the cord off. I'll take the plug off the garage and I'll hire hardwire this thing. Strange thing is that they sell this uh, with the plug on it or the version without the plug is $10 more, if that makes any sense. It's got less parts, but it's more expensive. So rather than pay $10 more for the version that you hardwire anyway, uh, we just got the $10 cheaper one with the cord, and I'll just take the cord off and hardwire it. In order to get that cord off, I'm gonna turn it over. It looks like um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws are gonna come out, and then this back should come off, and allow access to uh, where the cord goes in there. I hope it works that easy. Ooh, a little lock washer under there. Looks like that was just the start. Still have to get in here. So there's more screws buried deeper down in there. Get at those ones. It's an electrical connector here. I wanna, you know, it goes up to the back. I can't get to it. I'm gonna have to be careful here so we don't lose the face. And actually, I did not need to take the back off of that thing. Only these four to take the face off, it appears, which were accessible through these holes. So I guess I'll put the back back on. So change of plans. The outlet in the garage where this is going to go is not a NEMA 1450 like this. So I have to uh, install a 1450 outlet in place of the one that's there. So the charger is going to go here between the garage doors. So uh, this outlet, got to change that out for a 1450 style. I've got this handy electrical tester. The batteries are kind of going dead, so the beeper on it's getting soft, but. It's making noise because there's power to it. Over here to the electrical box and uh, flip off the breaker for that outlet. Let me go over here and check it again, make sure there's no power. Yeah, no. Beeping over there, it still works. That outlet's got power. This one's dead. So, good to go. Go ahead and pull this cover off of here. Seems to be wired in pretty simply. They didn't put any uh, crimps on the end or anything, just hammered down the wires. Okay, so we got this uh, NEMA 1450 plug instead here, so we'll go ahead and install that. Now for the NEMA 1450, this is supposed to be four wires there, well, three plus the ground, the bare ground. There should be black, red, white, and then the bare ground. But uh, I'm going to be insulating and rewiring the entire garage fairly soon anyway. So uh, when I do that, then I'll put the correct four wire wire in there. But for now, I'll just hook it up um, without, I'll use the bare ground 
where the white neutral is supposed to be. And then um, actually on this cable, red is one leg. I mean, black is one leg, white is the other leg. So we'll see how I'll hook it up. And then uh, I'll just leave the chassis ground or the case ground just off. These connectors are all kind of flipped around out of place. So I'm just uh, pushing back in there. There's a little tab that goes into a little slot there. That's where they're supposed to be. That's their home. There. Yeah, there it goes. So I'm gonna put the wires up in here, clamp down the screws that hold the wires in place, uh, and then I'll put the, uh, the clamp on the bottom side to hold the wire in place, and then I'll screw it to the two by four there, where, wherever I think is a good spot. It was a little hard to wrestle into place, but I've got them all secured in there now. Probably should have put the half of the clamp that screws on the bottom of there first, but that's all right. We'll get it now. There, well that half is on there. I'll just take and screw the other half to it, clamp the uh, wire in place. Okay, now the clamp is on there. Wire is nice and secure. Now we'll just um, screw this back plate to two by four here somewhere, wherever I decide is a good spot. I decided to put it over here so I can hang the charger here and the, the cord on the charger is pretty short so it'll just plug in there. So now one other thing is this circuit's on a 40 amp breaker and the charger is up to 40 amps and the instructions say to put it on a breaker that's 125% of what you're going to be charging at for amperage. So if we're going to use the full 40 amps, 125% of that would be a 50 amp breaker. And there's a there's a 40 amp in the spot right now. I spent an extra dollar and got a 60 amp anyway instead of 50 amp. It's even a little more than 125% of the max. So now we're going to have to go dark because I got to put the 60 amp right there and uh, got to throw off the main breaker to kill our power here. So it's gonna get dark in here. To install the charger, first of all, there's this bracket that bolts up there. I want to make sure I have it spaced out enough so the charger itself doesn't hit the garage door. You know, there's plenty of room there. Oops. Gotta make sure it goes the right. Gotta make sure it's installed the right way because then there's screws on the back of the charger housing that go in these slots and slide down in there. This is the top. These screws suck. And these screws here go in the back of the back of the juice box. Gonna have them protruding just enough so that they just barely grab that thin sheet metal. Pretty loose. Make it tighter. That's pretty tight. And there's actually a lock for the thing too, so the two screws are there, and then there's a lock that locks in here. So you can lock it to the wall. That'll go up and lock it. There, now nobody can steal it. Although, pretty easily just rip it right off that 2x4. All 
Now we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. Hang this cord up on its carrier here. Not much of a carrier for it. Pretty hefty cable. That's a lot of cable for this little carrier. I think that's pretty dumb. And then um, that to hold it. I suppose after using it a little bit, we'll stretch the cable out and then hang the cable in longer loops. We'll go flip that 60 amp breaker and power this thing up. Okay. I didn't read the manual yet for the um, setup procedure, so I don't know what it's doing. Sure is an annoying beep. So then uh, to connect it to the internet, got to go to their website. So we'll do that. So it says uh, the website is support-emobility.nlx.com. So I'm going there. Clicked on North America. Guess I'm clicking on residential. Ah, oh, there. Connects. Connect next gen juice box to Wi Fi. Apparently, I have to download and, and install the EV Juice Net app. So, we'll get that. Okay, so now I'm in the app. I had to uh, make a login, of course. Uh, there and let's see. Do that start. Connect new ju juice box to Wi Fi. Connect now. I have to turn on location. No, it's on. There we go. Have the Wi Fi password ready. Your juice box is properly mounted and not plugged into the power outlet. So I guess I gotta turn the breaker back off. Okay, and then next. Now plug the juice net device into the power outlet and click next. So I guess I gotta flip the breaker back on. There it is, hit next. Connect the device to your Wi-Fi network. Select the network name, JuiceNet, blah, 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 blah. Enter password, go electric. Once connected, return to this screen, okay. Oh, there it popped up. JuiceNet 552. Tap to connect. Okay, I, I didn't need to put a password in for the JuiceNet Wi-Fi connection. Now I go back to the app. Great, your JuiceNet device is now connected. Okay. <laughs> now I have to select my Wi-Fi network and connect it. This thing is picking up a lot of networks. There's mine. Enter the password. If I can remember it. Oh my God. Verifying access. Yes, I got my password right. Oh, it stopped beeping. Finally. It says almost done. Ah, complete. Next, now it's beeping again. Still beeping. Why is it beeping? Thinking possibly it was doing that error beep because it wasn't detecting a chassis ground. So I jumpered the chassis ground to the regular ground there and uh, we'll see if that does the trick. They're putting in that ground jumper. Seems to have done the trick. It's not beeping at me anymore. See what the app says, see if it's connected. The app was letting me know also that it had an error. So I had, to, I had to go through the app and reconnect the juice box again, but now it seems it's all good. It's on standby. I got it set up for our time zone and put in the address, which it required. Before it was showing offline, even after I reconnected it, but after a few minutes, it finally connected properly. And uh, now the lights are white, whitish colored up there. So I guess that means uh, it's good to go. If you want to see more random garage things, hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you get random notifications when a new random garage video is posted. Thanks for watching another episode of Random Garage live from Sturgis. And whatever you do, make sure you're always doing something.